Well, to do it. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Leoskar, and I'm very pleased today to conduct this webinar with Professor Dr. Edmond Hajis Risi. I hope I pronounce it right. Right. Uh, uh, professor, the professor is a good friend. Has become a good friend and one of the early adopters of XR technology. Uh, he is currently the founder, founder and rector of the private institution of higher education, UBT, University of Business of Technology. And this is a reflection of his experience uh, gathered uh, during his studies and work in many universities and international institutions. He is a graduate engineering in University of Pristina. After two years, he became a master uh, at the same university and also uh, um, master of advanced automotive technology from the same university. So he is also accredited examiner and trainer for quality management under the umbrella of European Organization for Quality Austria. He is also uh, educated uh, in manager quality in Austria, the first accredited expert for certification project in level um, four levels from the International Authority for Project Management and many, many other things. But um, I, first of all, welcome, uh, Professor. It's a big honor and pleasure to, uh, to have you and thank you for taking time with us today. Thank you, Dan, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation and I'm, uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here today and uh, have a discussion with you. And, yes. Sorry, would you mind just coming a little bit closer to the microphone because I, yes. I yes. Can, our audience cannot hear you very clearly. So a little bit better, but uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. It's, okay, are... so it, it, it is okay. It's a little bit better, but if you can keep your voice uh, high, then I think it will be perfect. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I have a bunch of questions for you today <laughs> about virtual reality, about education, about the fact that you're creating something that in my mind is unique in Europe. I probably visited three, 400 academic institutions and no time have I seen someone building up from bottom up a university like you've done. So uh, uh, first of all, congratulations for that. I had the pleasure to visit your university and it's really truly unique. You have a, a new approach to that. And <clears throat> maybe before we start my question, tell me a little bit of your story. How did you came up with this idea to build this university? and? How did you be able to go from a vision to reality? You know, it's thank you, Dan. It's it's quite a combination with uh, with uh, luck, with uh, inspiration, with dreams, everything. It's it's a it's a combination of it. I founded a greenfield area, which is Kosovo, a newborn country, uh, starting from scratch. But a lot of needs and requirements for for high quality education, for new technology, and so on. I was involved in, in, in Europe mostly in different industries. I worked uh, in, uh, in high, big industries, I, in the university, working with, uh, let's say, latest technology on intelligent systems and then. And, and. So this was quite a, a good momentum to reflect and starting kind of breakthrough in a green field uh, with the preposition, can you create a, a new system based on the best practices, based on the, on the international standards in, a, in countries in transition. And if you can it, what kind of impact you can do? And this was my, my experiment, my, uh, following my uh, preposition to, to, to prove, to test, uh, to develop. And, uh, and being a system engineer for me is a perfect match uh, to build a university. You know, there is enough complexity. Uh, to to integrate different uh, aspects, uh, different views, different uh, different areas, different knowledge uh, is never is enough. So in this case, you are always uh, running, be active, and and as you know, if you are active, if you do things, you move it with uh, energy. Quite, you can really also have a very interesting and uh, modern success, and as of course results, which uh, we can say today is quite interesting. Uh, interesting system as we try to uh, conclude a so-called entrepreneurial uh, innovation-based ecosystem university. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, innovation-based ecosystem with uh, a lot of uh, a different action in one place, in a small place-based 
uh, innovation ecosystem. And this is my my trying, my believing on 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 building this uh, this ecosystem, which is not a typical just a university education and research, but also very much on on innovation and very much on on development. Also, be able to take uh, social responsibility, be able to focus on sustainable development, resilience, innovation. And, uh, and then uh, if you have in mind those, uh, those models, those actions, those trends, uh, be owner, be founder, have a, a lot of uh, freedom to act and to decide and mm -hmm. not uh, losing a lot of time for argumentation why this makes sense. <laughs> if you see that this something makes sense, you don't need to, to argue and, and so on. And uh, and this is soul. So I think this is mm. how we succeed. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's very you no, know, it's very refreshing to see that uh, because you know I deal with a lot with old-fashioned university, I and mean, we deal with organizations like Harvard or like the, or Oxford that have very entrenched systems, and to innovate and change is almost. Uh, I mean, it becomes very difficult because you become. Uh, uh, basically a victim of your own success or past success. While in your case, you can actually start from fresh and you can leapfrog and you can do so in a very rapid way without having a lot of red tape. So, okay, I'm an engineer, so I like facts. I like practical facts. So tell exactly. me concretely, when did you start? How many students did you have then? How many students do you have today? How many programs? What do you offer with your programs? Tell me a little about about the called facts about uh, yes, yes. UBT, the startup was in 2001. So uh, this year we celebrate 20 years anniversary. We have, uh, thank you, we have uh, almost 4,000 students, active students, and uh, we have 1,000 staff. So this is the size of UBT with uh, almost 150 accredited majors. Today we are covering almost, uh, we are a comprehensive university covering almost all areas of the life. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is as a, an, a very good opportunity to, to pretend to create the ecosystem on the, from the view of education, from the view of, uh, of research and innovation. And uh, yeah, uh, what we are known here in the region is that we are the largest ICT school in the, West, uh, the Western Balkan. Uh, we are now the first 5G university campus in the Adriatic area and in the Western Balkan. With E.ON, we have the largest center now for virtualization, virtual and augmented reality, which is uh, as a, a very, uh, 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 let's say, a value add in the, in the ecosystem position, starting from data acquisition, data analytics, and virtualization. And uh, if you have all those components, uh, uh, I think this is uh, quite uh, very nice. So it's uh, last uh, ranking from the uh, in, uh, the five time the time high education Financial Times mm -hmm. ranking university ranking. We are the number one in the region for uh, impact ranking, which is as a uh, quite nice because you know then twenty years university uh, experience is not so uh, much in the sense, but really uh, it was a very positive rapid development which we can say, yeah, it was nice, it is nice, and looking forward to succeed uh, and have yeah. this conversation. Yeah, and what, what was amazing for us when we engaged with you in the program was that you rapidly did a campus-wide deployment, right? I think we started implementing this in 16 different bachelor programs and about eight master programs. And I saw that uh, during the midst of the COVID when uh, you know, most schools closed and you also were forced to close, uh, how quickly you could adapt and move everything into the XR environment. So we went from 1,000 students, you went from 1,000 students using the XR to 16,000 using the Earn XR program. That was the one of the fastest growth. And even more impressive that you have assigned your students, which I found remarkable to do the all the curriculum within XR and I saw you, you ramped up from, I don't know, 1,600 lessons in a very, very quick manner. So that was impressive. So tell me a little bit about um, which programs did you use this for I, I, uh, within the university, the XR part? 
As you already uh, mentioned, then we uh, we had a system uh, system approach uh, using the Classroom 3.0. We are a believer of uh, of Classroom 3.0. Uh, I'm teaching for more than now 30 years in the university, uh, trying to have did different didactic uh, pedagogical ways processes how to to make the the the, the part and um, teaching as a modeling and simulation from my side. I see that uh, the mixed reality is something that you cannot ignore. Even there is a, a importance uh, on this uh, process. You can gain a lot of uh, competence, a lot of uh, skills that uh, maybe you cannot express in another way. And uh, having this opportunity to, to to use the platform, we said that this is a value add for all the students and stuff. So in this case, it was a university approach. Uh, that everybody should uh, be able to, to use it in the class and uh, in an official uh, study process, of course. So we selected uh, 8,000 students at the beginning and uh, about 300 uh, staff from almost more than 200 subjects from all kinds of uh, disciplines. And uh, we did the training, uh, and we certified trainers, uh, and then we continued to implement in the class. And of course, uh, this was an extra uh, tools, extra value in the pandemic time uh, for students who have not be able to join labs, uh, objects, uh, a lot of visualization. This was not just a classical digitalization, or let's say having using so-called uh, uh, discussion like we do, but as well having an extra tool, an extra components at home during the pandemic time. And this was really very much uh, accepted, uh, valued, considered and motivation for students. And you see, they show their interest, they, they show their passion, they focused and even we succeed in one month, as you mentioned, to, sec to produce 150,000 lessons of course not all have been uh, qualitative enough to to consider as a knowledge for for let's say for curation in the future but it was very important that they uh, interact with the platform they use it they make uh, let's say kind of uh, a question and reflection how i can use what should we do and and then that so uh, in in most of the those 200 subjects so we we saw uh, outputs uh, in the classroom and then uh, we go further with evaluation of students using the platform, not just using as an extra tool just for for using, but uh, we create some uh, compulsory process uh, in the uh, uh, assessment, uh, which uh, we try to complete the entire process of uh, of using Classroom 3.0. And, uh, and we are continuing now with, uh, of course, with another professionalism, with another uh, uh, let's say competence as a from the staff, but as a from from the student side. Excellent, excellent. Now it's quite impressive to see what you've been able to achieve, and uh, I was very glad to 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 see that you're actually using it. Uh, a lot of people I have used in the past VR, more like a, in a special lab. You, you almost have to go in. There's a special dedicated person that ha holds the key to that place and not very accessible, quite isolated. And I, and I, I still see it today when we approach a, 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 you know, an academic institution. What you've done, and now many others have followed, is that you use it more like, if for lack of a better word, PowerPoint, right? Because it's easy to use. You don't have a PowerPoint professor. <laughs> you don't go to the PowerPoint place, right? It is everywhere. It is uh, co-located with all departments. Students have it on their laptops, they have it on their mobile devices. It is a sandbox to actually facilitate learning, training uh, in a better way, in a more exploratory way. And I think, and you hope, I don't know if you agree, but I think the pandemic actually has helped us in that context to accelerate something that was happening anyway, but maybe fast forward that three to five years in the future. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yes, yes, this is true. You know, we have a department for technology, uh, let's say education-based technology development for our university. We have a team we are working and we did a lot of digitalization to be, to be prepared and ready for 
virtualization and everything in let's say 2025 2026 because we know the trend is going in this direction but then pandemic was so that we we had to use it now so uh, if the ministry said we have to close the schools and universities we succeed to start and restart in three days and continue without break the process so so uh, I mean yes it is true you have not to ignore you have not to wait uh, for or you have just to act and uh, I think the technology is here now uh, there is a lot of benefits from this technology and uh, there is no reason to postpone this if you have it it's possible you can implement it why we should not uh, not use it and uh, if I may say done as of the the component of a diversification of uh, of uh, classroom 3.0 so you can use in university you can use in schools in especially in vocational education in stem education this is also very important the cost benefit that you have there because uh, uh, um, a lot of classical way of digitalization of education is to buy computers still pcs networks smart uh, tables mm -hmm. and then they are lo costing a lot but they mm -hmm. don't get the the right, uh, let's say, competence baseline that we are looking forward. So, mm. and in this direction, classroom three points that can reduce the cost. We had a, a design for the country a financial formula for wet education, uh, vocational education training. We we saw that the, you can uh, reduce to sixty percent this uh, this mm. process, and even you get more competence on this. What is uh, what is not just having at home. And and at, at attacking and contacting everywhere is as of the process of going inside of the system, which you cannot have in a in a classical physical object. Mm. And this is a lot of uh, a cost reduction and a lot of experience that you never get it if you have a machine. You cannot uh, disassemble the machine to see what is inside. You mm. cannot have the perception of the of the components in the inside machinery. Uh, for this process, so it's quite uh, with a with a, a, a mixed reality. You succeed mm. now to have another experience, and I think this was not before. And this is what what we consider that this is quite a, a perfect match. Now, I I, um, I really couldn't agree more. And uh, what what I think, uh, you know, we are constrained, especially now post pandemic. Uh, costs are budgets are tough, uh, and and many countries are suffering, right, financially. So I think it's very important to, to, uh, to recognize that and take advantage of technology. And you are correct. There's no university on earth. I don't care if it's Harvard or the, the richest Stanford. They can't uh, have access to all the engines, for example, for aircrafts. An engine today from Rolls-Royce is four to six million. A, a high-end MRI device can cost you 12 million. Uh, not to talk about, you, you'll never have access to the Hydron Collider in Switzerland, right? That's billions and billions. But all these objects, 1.1, you can access through uh, through Eon uh, XR. So, or technology like this. And that, that really uh, is a great saving. But what I also am encouraged by is now, this, pro with this program has run now for several years. So we start to get hard evidence of what it does for education. And I'm very happy to see that it's not only evangelized, it's just like us that says that, but now it becomes common and public knowledge. And I wanted to share with you one thing here. Uh, there was a recent um, report that I read from uh, PwC. I'll, I'll share that uh, in, the, in the comment section. But now they actually have the hard evidence that students learn four times faster they are more emotionally engaged, 275%. Uh, they are, it's four times more focused than, for example, uh, what you see in e-learning, traditional e-learning. So, so the, for me, this has been evident for many years, but now it's common public knowledge. Um, so how, is the, how are students reacting to this when they get uh, in the XR class? What has been the feedback from students? Yes, I, I mean, it was, uh, we see the reaction in the next uh, semester, in this academic year, because we started last academic year, now we are continuing, and they are uh, requesting or they asking uh, self to, to, to use it, the platform, to, to have more access to, to, to reflect on it. And this is, uh, I think, the, the best feedback that we, 
we can get from the from the platform and they, especially in the in schools they 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 generate as a themselves different uh, virtual based product like architecture school the design school engineering schools uh, even the the medicine so they are really very proactive on on this and you can see a lot of creativity what they do uh, during their studies and uh, and we we com- let's say combine it that every process of learning should go in a, in a virtual based uh, outcome uh, in a platform of uh, of your reality which is uh, very nice because as you mentioned you create a additional library you create a knowledge uh, lake uh, on on 3d uh, asset and virtualization on, on, on many things and this uh, you can also generate the knowledge management knowledge curation and this is very important because the creativity you generate through learning you can use as a knowledge for the next generation you don't mm-hmm. lose you are not losing something and just for for the grades or for assessment, but you you take in place, and I think the entire library, uh, it's it's a perfect match. And as you said, it's a public. This can be used for 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 public purpose. You can uh, uh, you can be more known. The, your authorship can be visible, and uh, we have a slogan here: make local knowledge more visible. And yeah. through this platform, you can really create this. Uh, visibility of your uh, creativity your uh, your work done your results uh, globally yeah <clears throat> i can resist uh, i got so excited when you said these things so i can't resist to show something that has to do with potentially architecture but could be anything could be medical and yes. you haven't seen this i think uh, it's, it's new for you so it's a little surprise because next tuesday we will launch this new product called 9.0 so this i took actually th- Five meters from here on my veranda and uh, what I, we did is that I took an architecture model and I put it the veranda is empty there's there's no environment so I happen to take architecture it could be a hospital it could the only things that are real are the lamps there to the right the white lamps other everything is uh, augmented reality uh, and uh, the level of visual quality the realism the scale because I can walk around physically in this environment <clears throat> and um, you, I, you know, I can make it small, I can make it big, uh, and I can also take it apart and, and, and examine the different aspects. The other thing that with the new Eon is the visual quality. So scanned objects now reflect the real shadows. So they get light from the physical world into the virtual world and the virtual world reflects the physical world. So we get that very nice merger. So uh, <clears throat> with, with the with a new version, I'm just gonna share a 180 seconds video. We kind of, I made a full circle um, and I'm making a little promotion for next week because we're gonna spend one hour to experience this. Yes. So we have all the great features from the past. We have the access to the, you know, the, the library, you can import, we improve the import and optimization. So we cover more formats now than we did a year ago, for example, when we started. But I'm super excited about using a normal phone and scanning your physical world. So it's not only that you can do a 360, but you can take your lab, your chemistry lab, and scan it with a normal phone and then enrich it, right? So we're adding now artificial intelligence. So it recognizes the object and it can on the fly provide the annotations in your local language. We used to only support uh, 32 languages. We are now expanding to 108. Uh, So that's, that's great. We also use the scraping technology to uh, enrich your annotation. So it's not only text, but you can embed the videos. Uh, you can then explore. We still have that snapping functionality, so you can actually take it apart. That's improved, but we t- take it now to, to larger scale. And um, overall, if you can like to add avatar, if you can take your famous Pristina sculptures. I like the thing about local knowledge and make it visible. Uh, and I predict that YouTube, as we know it, it's gonna expand to having, and I'm using technology like this to actually have spatial uh, experience. It's not just flat movies, right? So that's that's one thing that I, uh, I really like. And uh, digital twins of almost everything, and you can combine it in, in 360. And then of course you can create, remember, the ability to make a 3D recording or a step-by-step procedures uh, or now we can add animations to this so and you can take it all the way to a high end because we also support unity if you want to do something there quizzes exams 
I really love the new um, collaborative XR meeting capabilities that, that is there. Um, and also the ability to assess. I think that's a very important component that you actually can objectively measure how well the skills are there. And finally, the ability to inject digital data in the physical world. So do it the other way around. Not, no, not, uh, and, and that's something we've had in the past, but now what we have added to this is persistent tracking. So you could actually have uh, uh, tracking based on the new technology that uh, soft, uh, the mobile devices support. And of course, ultimately you want to publish this to anything, right? And 4 billion people have tablets, and mobile devices, that's our preferred choice, but you can also use high-end devices if you have that budget. Most people don't at the moment. Um, and share it on social. So the vision we had of a metaverse 36 years ago is becoming the virtual campus is becoming a reality. The merged classroom is becoming a reality. Uh, and so that's for me very, very exciting. So looking forward to have you, if you have time next week to join this um, event. And we will highlight for one hour, nine, the key nine feature with the platform. By the way, an interesting remark, this apartment that I put in AR, it's the same here. It's the same thing. It's just the only difference is that one is in virtual reality uh, using Oculus and the other one is just using a phone. So we still have the benefit that once you create a lesson, you can e automatically propagate to three different formats, mobile, AR, VR. So you basically kill three birds with one stone. I think that's, that's pretty easy. And then the last part I see now is that we start to get a lot of evidence from other other people so sorry that was my little commercial there <laughs> couldn't no, no. Um, it's very important and sorry for it but re really you are doing a great job and i'm very happy to know you and to work with you and your team because this is uh, something that is uh, it's re revolutionized the the process uh, and those who experience in education in training in knowledge and Many things that they they can't feel what you are doing, and it really it's it's a it's a it's a perfect that you do. Thank, Thank you. you for your Thank contribution. You. But but the reality is that this is just technology. The rubber doesn't meet the road until people like you that are passionate about pedagogical about implementing all the content, all the richness will come from organizations like you. Uh, and uh, I we were talking just before uh, the webinar about the new competition coming up which will launch also next week, uh, where we uh, invite all our partners to, to basically create visibility around their local knowledge, right? I've been to Pristina. Pristina is a wonderful place. I'm, I, I can vouch for it as a tourist destination, as a cultural place, but most people have not. A lot of people haven't been to Kosovo. What about creating that richness, in, encapsulating that knowledge uh, using technology, simple technologies, where you just use your phone uh, and sharing that with the world. And that's what I really hope we can achieve uh, with this global family, if I may call it like this. That we are now 72 countries participating and highlighting. Uh, I will also say, so So, what's your thought about this competition? Are you joining? <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, I, I think the, the first place is already uh, reserved and uh, the rest can compete for the second phase. Uh, it's a joke. <laughs> I like your. I of course, like we will be there. We will be there, done, and uh, and uh, we will be active. Of course, it's it's a it's a, a process for students uh, being active, knowing each other, and and creating this, as you said, a, a global a global citizenship approach where you can connect. Uh, uh, local in a, in a global approach and I think we will do it. It's, it's very important. We are all, all, always doing now. We are, we, I just have a, a meeting with Minister of Culture here mm -hmm. and uh, we propose to create a digital interactive map for cultural heritage in Kosovo. So using the, the uh, ER, Eon Reality platform so that we can not have just object but having an entire geographical process where you can come closer with uh, any uh, devices you have uh, so that you can you can reflect and this is really something nice is possible and easy to implement in the sense that you can bring different people uh, 
uh, uh, an easy access to the to the technology, and then they can uh, just contribute. So uh, we are calling in university as a as a uh, as citizen science, citizens uh, innovation. So where you involve uh, involve the citizens in the academia, the citizens are uh, active member in creating and impacting. Like uh, Japanese, they call now society 5.0. So interaction. And, and feeling as a part of, of impact and not being alone or just getting this uh, this value. So uh, tourism, cultural heritage, knowledge, uh, uh, sharing and acting, uh, it's, I think, a very good opportunity in, in the moment. But uh, No, it do. is. It is. And uh, two things that I want to bring to your attention. First of all, uh, we've been invited and you are invited now to a European uh, Union call. Uh, for digitalization, they actually have, I think, a $9 million grant offer now that we, we should submit together. It has to be three different uh, universities. Uh, and we have already Romania said yes, Babish University said yes, you could be one of them. Genoa said yes, also. Yeah, we have plenty of the partners. And uh, what they want to do is to, is cultural heritage, is to capture the richness and the traditions and of each, uh, each location and to be able to share it. So the sharing part that I see, we actually got $3 million now together in Sigishwara. Sigishwara is a small city in Transylvania. And this, this $3 million budget is in EU to what they call virtual Sigishwara. So the idea is to, uh, when you visit the place, let's say you go to a famous uh, statue, uh, you can hold your phone and persistent tracking will get information about it. Or you can get the medieval guide to walk you around an avatar through the city. But, but we haven't done the virtual museum. I've done something like that in Egypt, but not big enough. So if you can talk with the Minister of Culture to do that, and my idea is very simple. Uh, let me just share my screen. So what I think we could do together, uh, which by the way, will be super, super duper exciting uh, as an extension to this competition. Let me just see if I have it. Uh, yeah, this is it. So what you can do practically today is you can take your mobile device. And I like the citizen participation because this you can extend to anyone, right? So, and then Hi, you can- I'm going to demonstrate today capture. how easy it is to use the on XR. So this, this is how you do it. Uh, Let's listen in for a object. second. So here's a physical object. You can see that this is- um, uh, That's a Chinese vase, wine vase. And uh, I will do a couple of things with it. Uh, I will scan it in a few seconds and I'll bring it into Eon and bring it to life and create a lesson from it. So what you do is basically it takes about an one and a half minutes. You can see in the left corner what's happening here, right? It is, and there is my digital twin, right? <laughs> Looks, it's, it's a bet. Which one is real? Which one is not? And so you can do this uh, outside. Uh, I just played with it for two hours and I scanned quite a few objects. And then once you do that, you can uh, have uh, annotations. So let's look here. So you, you can see the one to the right, the glossy one. I put some glossiness in it. It's a virtual one. And you can see the annotations. This bronze sculpture is shaped and like a holding a And Arsitio's daughter recorded, made it through the recording. Man personifies something evil from which so when you go to your museum, your virtual museum, you get all these things. And um, yeah, so it's it's actually quite easy. So look, this is your virtual museum. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. obviously you have to put it in context. You have to uh, have a story. You can put quizzes, you can put identification, you can do so many things. So I think, you know, um, I'm, I'm super excited about doing something like that together with you. Uh, and so you will, you'll get the new update will be available next uh, Tuesday for that. Okay, enough about technology. Let's talk a little bit about academia and, um, and challenges, right? Uh, I'm an engineer, so I like problems. What do you see today uh, are the biggest challenges in education? Uh, but, you know, then we, we call this is the convergence revolution, convergence knowledge. So you have to mix it, the knowledge. It's not more just one direction. You have to, to interact and the, to interact between medicine and, and VR. You have to, to create this interface, understanding, communication, uh, 
a different design, different accreditation of programs. So those are are challenges that uh, uh, that sometimes in a in a legal procedure, or so in in a, let's say the environmental point can be some resistance. But we are trying to avoid it. This this is the the mm. point. So mixing the 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 uh, ecosystem. So this small, as I mentioned, and then on top you cannot ignore the smart systems, the smartness. So digitalization with the with a smart concept of artificial intelligence, uh, 5G, and many other aspects where you can really come to a kind of a, a complex, uh, a complex uh, uh, feedback knowledge and see whatever you can, you can see from the perspective of the, of the humanities and, and planets. So we are reaching so a level that some of question of, uh, of, uh, of behavior, some question of, of planetary uh, behavior and so on, we can modeling, we can simulate, and, and but for it you need a precondition to be prepared in a in a smart based uh, uh, ecosystem so what i'm doing now is uh, as i said i i i create a, a, a 5g based uh, environment why because you have to to have a real time decision making to see what mm -hmm. does mean smart systems and, mm -hmm. and how can interact with a huge data then you you, you have this data, Internet of Things, and then, which is it's today possible. And if you see this interaction, so you can get a lot of uh, new knowledge. And then you go in the data analytics, which is still uh, then as a, again, not more on the level of, of uh, let's say, a power of, of human base or single human base. You have to deal with, uh, with different uh, artificial intelligence, with different uh, uh, activities. So, so this is a question: How you link with this uh, tools mm. today, and how you get more for students? And uh, and another place is to to keep students uh, attractiveness, to keep mm. students being university uh, again attractive for for them because they have a lot of access through internet, uh, through a lot of visualization and so on. What is a value add if they are coming here? And the coming value add in the in a university is exact to to be ahead with uh, with infrastructure with technology and with some components that uh, that uh, you actually so it's it's not just challenge i would say but as a, it's a kind of opportunity that we cannot ignore in the, the next year so we are quite in the middle of fast transformation through digitalization this mm -hmm. technology already exists today we are now uh, have to to hurry to act more on volume to implement, 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 implement. So now we are, I think, in the next five, six years, we have to to implement and see what is happening. If we have this knowledge and this experience, then I think we are looking forward to 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 the next question. It's it makes sense coming back to to human uh, point zero direction <laughs> or or where we are going. So this is, I think, the the next and now the point is that we are doing is this uh, sustainable development the un model for sdg 2030 so everybody is looking on on the, on the on the focus that the the entire planet should sustain because we have a lot of uh, question and they as covid and others create a lot of uh, uh, components for resilience yeah. and i think we still have to deal with the resilience uh, preparing students and staff and and, 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 and and people, industries, how to deal more and how to prepare, not in resilience from the point of engineering, but as a resilience from the point of uh, a psychological point. Yeah. That those, those companies together are very, very important that we, we have to act. So for me, it's, a, it's this system engineering, system thinking, interaction in an ecosystem to create core values, to have some, some shared vision. Uh, in a local level, then in a national level, then in a global level, and then education, research, and innovation should be run in the middle or in, in the in the process. And uh, this is nice to to draw and to 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 uh, see, but as an implementation, uh, uh, needs to go through through it. And uh, there are challenges, of course. They are not easy point. You know, I would say one thing that we learned and I learned uh, from this COVID, which has been a terrible thing for humanity, but there's been, I, I, I would say, never waste a good crisis, right? 
because one thing I, I was just typing this three hours ago, uh, some of my thoughts in this uh, context, I don't know if you can see the screen now, but I think the best examples of organization taking location out of the globalization equation are those that are developing what we call real virtu virtual realities, technologies that blend the virtual and the physical world. And I think that's one thing that we learned. And I'm not talking only about Eon now. I mean, uh, things like Zooms, all this technology. We, we learned that I don't have to spend six hours on a flight uh, to fly to New York just to have a one hour meeting, right? Uh, I could do that in other formats and it's not required for me to achieve something. And I, I would say current uh, virtual, virtual reality technology mostly engage our senses, right? Uh, vision, hearing, but, but what I'm excited about is also to expand this to other senses, right? More realistic. And, and the, the idea of capturing your world, I think it's interesting. I was reading an article, this is a story from Fortune uh, magazine about exactly this topic. And they, they were saying in the entry of the article, and I quote, the pandemic has upended our sense of where, taking the concept of location out of glo globalized experiences with major implication, right? And I can see that in our reality, not in virtual reality, that the way we were able to you know, share our programs with the world, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but just as recent as, what is it, last two weeks or few weeks, we got uh, places joining from, I don't know, Harare. I mean, I, we, I didn't, could dream about that a year ago. And they are super active in Harare, uh, Harare's Technology Institute of Technology. Uh, and, you know, places now are coming up like Vietnam, Laos, uh, where, where people are using it. And to, because of the technology and acceptance, for example, of things that I can talk, that, like I talk with you right now, I feel that I know them, although I never met them, right? So uh, the fact, and, and, and I also see that we are employing now, for example, a lot of people uh, just employed this week, uh, not two weeks ago, a lady from Rwanda, uh, from uh, people from all corners of the world, and they are as smart and efficient <laughs> as everybody else, right? And as well educated. So it's a different world. This pandemic has accelerated that process that was inevitable, but now it's going in a much faster, much faster way. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's it's true. As I, I said, I, t I took an example of uh, 5G. Uh, as I said, if you if you create this uh, cyber physical infrastructure, which I think we need still a lot to do in all the mm -hmm. globe, still is is not very very stable, but technology exists and we have to implement, then we can reach this uh, real-time decision-making, real-time uh, virtualization. And uh, if we link the, uh, the virtualization with the real parameters of the life, then you, you create this, uh, this access and this feeling, what has happened, without being uh, physically every time and, 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 and flying. And I think this is the momentum that, from the technology point of view, you can reach it, you can do it, you have just to... Uh, uh, to act, but uh, being in the entire region, uh, first 5G university campus means there are a lot of other universities and other institutions to do this level so that we can reach this yeah. dream in a, in a reality, uh, re real life. So uh, it's, it will be uh, very much depends now how fast the, the, the using of technology, the state of the art, we will, we will act. And, uh, and uh, I think as fast as we do it, I consider this will be a positive for a quality of life for generation different knowledge that maybe will be and we hope and and I believe on it that it will be better not yeah, worse. Yeah. I have another question this is off topic but I can resist. I have a, a Apple uh, phone and it has this service it gives to me and says how how many hours I've been connected with different devices. So how much screen time have I had? Uh, I don't know if you have something like that. Uh, and w without going too intrusive, would you mind sharing what's your average, what do you think uh, is your average screen time from the moment you wake up until you go to bed? 
whether it's oh. a phone or a screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, uh, this is a mix of, of 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 activities in my case. I'm a little bit different. Yes, very much in screen on screen and meetings. This is one and as a very much on operation level because you have to design something that you does not mean that all the time you have the the capacities you have to build in the same time implementation and capacity building goes in the parallel way in order to succeed to 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 be the first to be uh, farther so so you 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 need competences you need people and this you need talent so in this case you have today technology, you have everything, but talents are missing all, <laughs> everywhere. So for this reason, it's very important that we uh, act very much on, 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 on people, especially in future generations. So we just opened a junior hub here in order to support them much more in, in, the, in an early stage on understanding those what we are talking, because I don't think we need to postpone it if the, everything exists. And if they get it, then I think there is a... I, we can call breakthrough, we can call faster, faster implementation, whatever, efficiency in the entire part. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mix. I, I have today a different, uh, uh, different meetings uh, with different <laughs> approach. So, for example, today we open a, a, a public policy simulation lab with the University of Cambridge. So it, oh, it's a new, new uh, lab uh, how to combine system engineering with public policy for complex system design and quite public policy. Uh, I have today with the done the conversation. So in the, the technology side, in the middle, I had some meetings with the construction company to build my new building, which we are working because we need more space for labs. And then having another uh, other meeting, and after it we will write some uh, <laughs> work and report. So it's a it's a it's a mix of things, and uh, I think uh, Google has uh, still uh, some problems to to model the, the entire uh, complexity of our behavior. <laughs> so in this case, uh, I think for you and for me, it's it's not easy for Google to. To, to follow us, uh, they need to, uh, they need uh, <laughs> no, they're, they're catching up. Here, so they, they do a lot, they, they get a lot of uh, following process and, uh, and especially uh, what we do on the other side is in sport, uh, talents in sport and e, and e sport and tarts. So mm -hmm. this is also something that, that is going again with virtual reality to visualize because the vision, the neuro, neuroscience is the most important to develop for talents and the application of virtual reality, augmented mixed reality, extended reality, whatever you call. It's, it's the most important because you can visualize the things and you can train their vision and uh, being prepared for, uh, for a level of stars, which is not easy for other technologies. So in this case, there are a lot of uh, uh, application, which uh, this is why we are believers on it and, uh, and we follow you then. Thank you. Now you're right about uh, that. Reminds me because we we had a we have a company we are not as active anymore in that area, but uh, called Eon Sports, and what uh, what it was used for developed application. Uh, for example, we started American football where you you know when you get your ball in, exactly. in you have X amount of milliseconds to determine where to read the three dimensional map. That is very people are moving in all direction to make the decision. And that is uh, plastic. I mean, uh, the brain is plastic, so you can train that ability like you train weights. Uh, and uh, by creating those environments, just where to shoot, same with baseball. Football, it, the uh, European football is a bit more complicated because it's even more complex, right, in some way. So, and it was scientific evidence developed by University of Montreal that showed that uh, you can actually train if you hurt or let's say you don't play for a while. It's not so much just the muscles, it's the brain that needs to be retrained uh, to exactly. do that. And that applies in, not only in sports, that applies in all kinds of decision making, whether it's uh, emergency procedures, military, whatever, whatever you have, where you have to train for those, um, those type of events. Yeah, it's quite, quite intriguing. Listen, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this discussion is, first of all, very intriguing, and we could probably go on for hours. Uh, we are scheduled for about an, an hour, and we already well, about 10 minutes left. I, I know you're busy. So I would like to ask a question a little bit more futuristic, right? 
So when you and I went to school, we had to learn a lot of facts, right? We want to history no, I... to know the year that this king was born and what, how, et cetera, et cetera. Today, uh, we have access to Google, so most facts are kind of meaningless to learn. And I guess we went to the flip classroom and then eventually we are going to 3.0. If you are to extrapolate five, 10 years in the future and look at the advances in artificial intelligence, uh, the advances in IoT, 5G becoming 6G, virtual reality, augmented reality becoming the normal modality to interact with computers, right? The next generation will be here, not, not in the screen or looking at a small screen. How would this impact education and what will be the role of education? And if I'm a professor 10, five, 10 years from now, let's say 10 years because it's far enough. Uh, and neither of us hopefully is ret still not retired, but uh, um, walk me through what you think will happen and how, how modern education will be conducted. What's different? Yeah, uh, it's a very interesting question. I think, first of all, I'm thinking that uh, as, as of the schools and universities will be very much virtual. Uh, will be this is the, the not very much physically rather than than virtual based, which is uh, another transformation. So people don't need to use transport very much for just sitting in a classroom and going back at home. Or so uh, they will use for social components interaction, but the rest they can increase the efficiency because of this technology. They can have a lot of of uh, let's say elements that they have today even better. The second point we say is, I think the our role in the future is to train the brain, exactly the, the, uh, the previous discussion. So we will not take about the, uh, the reading and materials and the knowledge. So the, our role is just to, to, to push to make the pressure from another level of limits of competence. So just asking more, asking for more, and they should use the entire technology to, to, to go to another level of, of let's say, talents or, or, or competence. I think this role of us in, in, uh, in orientation and teachers, not just to transmit the knowledge, but better maybe to, uh, to be a, a trainer, a coach, uh, mm -hmm. a assessor in order to, to move them maybe with a more, more competence yeah. in, in psychology and in emotion in, in, in those components so that you, you move it. This is this is not an easy to transform uh, all all the generation or all the generation, but it is something that you have because people wanted to to be attractive and uh, and maybe creating some condition that universities still can maybe have some mono, some monopoly against you. Hmm. Yeah, people to yeah. say yeah. to get a degree, you you have to reach a level of of. Uh, of competences, but this is the point: how to 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 put the target, what to do more, how to orient it, and uh, I think still the university will exist uh, yeah. in all life. So, and let's see what whatever I um, parallelly done. We have a lot of technology, a lot of good things that we can do. It's happen mm -hmm. and making happen. In the same time, uh, sometimes I think uh, the speed is is slower motion. So, in the sense of entire globe. So. So it's still uh, some some uh, component uh, have to be done in another way. So you know, I did a PhD for intelligent systems in nineties. I designed a factory with working with people, the entire uh, intelligent based factory with intelligent scheduling and everything. Mm -hmm. But I still am waiting twenty years to have a case of this uh, factory. So we are still working. To, to reach this level. So sometimes as of the delay between the technology mm. and an end is, is going more in the implementation, but uh, this this devi devi deviation between the uh, state of our knowledge and implementation is coming, uh, it's going... Mm. Uh, yeah, it's small, yeah, so in, I think this speed can be faster than, and every year we can have, and in 2030 maybe it would be a total uh, uh, another transformation because really you see every every two three years you have uh, uh, in the last let's say two three years you have 90 percent of new knowledge generation that you never have before in your experience so if you see the curve how oh, you generate knowledge in last year how oh, you could capture the data in that then it's something that you say what wow, something happened and uh, then the question where i'm in this environment and how to deal with this so but uh, 
And it's fascinating. You know, I started my career 36 years ago doing aircraft simulators. And, you know, they used to cost $50 million. But if you think about what you do in an aircraft simulator, you are solving a problem, right? Uh, and it's uh, you have to take decision very fast. You, you are in a simulator, you turn off an engine, you put bad weather, and you expose the pilot for that. And his mastery of all the knowledge, all the detail he has is to his performance. And life is like that. Most things are problem solving, right? Whether you have to, you have a company and you have to pay people salaries and you have to meet certain expectation or you have a patient and you have heart surgery, whatever job we want to prepare the students of the future for the job of the future will be problem solving. And I think universities will have to equip students with that capability to solve problems, to gather information. They don't need to remember everything. Even as a doctor, you may you need to have the general knowledge, but the publications of uh, is so rapid that even in the new topic, you have it's impossible to know everything. So you have to rely on AI to guide you and help you. But the wisdom of decision making and problem solving is what I think university needs to solve. And I think the technology such as uh, virtual augmented reality will help because it can put you in that situation, right? It can create the scenario where the teacher is your, not your teacher, but it's your coach, both exactly. during the process and after the process, so you can learn. And I think that's it. Regarding the physical versus non-physical, uh, it's funny because uh, Professor Bertil Anderson is, is a former Nobel Prize uh, um, chairman. He's also on my advisory board. He said to me, Dan, yes, you're right about all this uh, VR and so on, but students still want to date, right? They don't want to sit with their mother in the kitchen <laughs> and, and sit there and, in virtual reality. They actually want to meet girls eventually or get boys. And, you know, a university is a social place, right? So it's it's yes. a place where you meet peers, you bond. So I think that element will always exist. I was sharing this idea yesterday. Yesterday I had a webinar with the Academy Award winner. The, um, his name is uh, John Guetta. I'll send you a link. Jana. And, and he's the one that did Matrix, Bullet Time. And he was, I mean, he did uh, Lucasfilm. Uh, and he also was working for Microsoft with Kinect and all this technology. And when I told him about this, he says, he said, Dan, uh, no, I, I, so you mean that uh, university is a dating place? <laughs> no, I don't mean that. It's not a dating place, but it's part of that fabric. So I hope, I really hope university will not go away because it's a very central. Um, um, no, I, for example, done just maybe just to add, uh, sorry yeah. for interruption, but. Uh, no, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I, I, because of, uh, uh, of this, Trend that uh, you are you are exp expressing, and I mentioned as an innovation ecosystem. I'm building so a small scale city, so called UBT Smart City, because we believe that people should live there. People mm. should interact with technology, yeah. and 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 have fun and date uh, dating and and many other. Because I think this is the human base. If we lose all those components, that maybe then is another. Society 10.0, which we will see what is, but uh, in this point of society 5.0, the point is the harmony between technology and humanity. So yeah. still the humans and machine is not in a very good interaction. Sometimes they see as an enemy, sometimes as a tool because we need and, and somebody is doing. But I think in the future, we, we have to, to harmonize this interaction, this cooperation between both sides and uh, having as a as a positive components for human be being and as well giving the humans and uh, and a feeling that they have more impact in society yeah because at the moment we have a feeling that machinery technology data are taking the decision and we are just following this ratio of the data but i think we can come back to the component where the people the citizen mm -hmm. of the of a city can act uh, actively on how to plan the city in the future. Yeah. And this opinion, decision, citizen, through technology and interaction can be uh, create more happiness. And I think happiness is, is also another very important component that we are looking forward to. Have. Listen, Edmund, if I may call you so, Professor, uh, I can say <laughs> we, become, we become friends in a short uh, time. Uh, I cannot 
come up with a more wonderful way to end uh, this conversation, which, by the way, will continue hopefully in Pristina very very soon. Yeah. I'm vaccinated, so I can't wait to come to Europe and we'll yeah, meet so well. for a meal and continue this dialogue in a positive way. And I'm also very much grateful for for your support and your uh, usage of this technology and being the pioneer you are in Europe to to push the envelope. And on and that high note, thank you once again for participating and looking forward to, to meet you soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really a pleasure. All the best and looking forward. So I'm happy to work with you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.